Today we are having a session on intentional parenting. And we have two great speakers who are going to be going to dissect the topic with us today. And it promises to be an amazing time. So sit back, relax, have a glass of water. So it's Find the Link Parenting. We're empowering parents, raising change makers. We have session four today. Um, and the link series is to enlighten, empower, inspire, and all of us have something to give. So we want to give back. Okay. We're talking intentional parenting today. We're going to be going through some topics, loving, leading, praying, studying. Um, I think Dr. Shola Fatala will be starting first. We have two great speakers. Dr. Shola Fatala, who's been on this series earlier. Um, she's a general practitioner based in Manchester with a family, dear sister, dear friend. And we have Mrs. Adi Dayo Ayedu, who, for those who don't know, happens to be my dear mother. <laughs> okay, so I'm very excited that she's here. Um, nobody should think that I, I am twisted her. <laughs> I think she's, she's happy to do it. Um, next on Find the Link Parenting, we are going to be talking, dealing with teenagers, which is going to be an awesome topic to listen to. Well, all of our series are awesome and they've been getting better. Um, there's going to be one on missed parenthood, dealing with loss, one on parenting and physical health, parenting and mental health, and some others, because we have 12 series on the public Zoom. We're going to have four more series in the private group. And that brings me to the next slide. We have an active online group on WhatsApp where we're having weekly prayers, we're having discussions about parenting. And the aim there is learning and sharing. Kindly fill the form if you're interested. It should be in the chat. Um, we do love feedback, fill Imagine. the form. The feedback form at the end of this of the session. And please check replays on YouTube. The YouTube is Tammy Software Praising Child. Or you can follow on Twitter, Praising Child, Instagram, The Praising Child, which is just newly active. And on Facebook, Taming Talk by Praising Child. We have the session one on YouTube at present. The others should be getting there. I would encourage everyone to come to the Zoom, Zoom sessions because it's taking a bit of time to load it and edit and get it on the YouTube, but it will get there. Okay. And this is our motto for this series and for us as parents that I and the children God has given me, we are for signs and wonders. Mm -hmm. And we say that to ourselves in every meeting and we mean it and we believe that it will be a re reality in our lives. Okay. So over to you, Dr. Fatola. Over to you. Okay. So let me see if I can share my screen. Okay. Um, yeah, my name is... Um, Christiana Fatala, some people know me as Shola, so whatever you call me, I'm fine by it. I'm a mother of two kids, um, a six-year-old and a seven-year-old, a boy and a girl. And I happen to also teach the teenage church. Um, so my wealth of experience may just be till that teenage age, which I think um, is a primitive age where lots of things are being formed. So yeah, so, yeah I'll start by this. Um, Quote by Frederick Douglass, it's easier to build strong children than repair broken men. So, and I think if we are given an option to choose something easy and easier, you rather go for the easier one. So that's why it's very, very important that at this age and when they are so little, that's the time you want to start doing things. Now, um, before I go on to the next slide, we mentioned intentional parenting. So when I looked at um, the dictionary again and I see the synonym of intentional, what does that word mean? It means so many things. It's deliberate, it means calculated, it means planned, it means premeditated, it means pre-planned, it means purposeful. So there are so many things to it. So you don't start, um, you don't start parenting only when you have the children. It's something you need to plan. It's something you need to calculate, just like you're calculating once you go into the marriage or into the relationship and you're calculating things and you're planning things, parenting as well is the same. So how do you become intentional with your parenting journey? So um, I've asked three, and I've, I've, I've been able to um, um, highlight this in um, three different areas. One is have a specific plan, agreement on what matters, 
individual strengths and weaknesses. If you're in a marriage, then you want to say, what are the strengths that I have, that my husband has, or that my wife has? What are our weaknesses? Because whether you like it or not, some of them will be in the genetic makeup of the child. Now, priorities, your skills over academics. Some people will say, oh, I prefer my child to play football than go to school. So the academics is not going to be a priority, is the playing of football that will be a priority. Spirituality, what kind of spiritual being do you want your child to become? Behavioral wise, what kind of behavior? So that's the time to plan. That's the time to know what is important as you are bringing the child up and so model the child to what you want the child to be, God helping you, except God reorientates. And that brings me to um, this next slide. So the second thing is review. From time to time, reprioritize. So whatever your initial plan is, you should have a review period. You should have a reprioritizing period. You should have a re-strategizing period. And that depends on so many factors. I would say age. So what we are teaching a child at age two is different from what the child should be knowing at age five. And it's different from what the child should be knowing at their, um, at their teenage years. So I thought the more the children grow, things will get better. And I speak with a lot of my friends that have teenage children and they say, each of them come with their own challenges or each age comes with their own challenges. So it's not left to me to start making sure that I'm planning towards that period. Again, why do you need to review, reprioritize and re-strategize if they develop any new behavior? So you're thinking a child starts lying. You don't expect a child to start lying until age seven. And then your child starts lying at age, told is our first lie at age five that you want to reprioritize, you want to review. Again, school performance. So if you think, okay, um, I think by age three, the child should be able to write X and Y or not be bothered. And then at age five, the child cannot do what he or she is expected to do. Then that's another time to review. Next slide, please. So um, the third one, which is very important, is involve the child respectfully where appropriate. And I say respect. The way we expect to be treated, yes, they are our own children, but they need to be respected. And as you're respecting them, you are teaching them to respect. And once they see that you have a plan, like I said, where appropriate, where you think they will understand, then you need to be involving them. Like in my house, when the kids, if a couple of years ago we were on holiday and I think I was just tired of the bickering, they are like um, less than a year um, apart. So the bickering was so much and I was like, I think this has got to the end of it. So I brought out a piece of paper and I brought out a pen and I said, okay, let's stop. What are the attitudes that you people feel upsets me and that just makes the house noisy? Now they thought that they were doing each other lots of good. So one person was saying she pushes, the other one was saying um, she does this, she bites. So I was listening as they say it, I will write it. As they say it, I will write it. As they say it, I will write it, okay? So at the end of it, now, what the way I train them is we have mild, moderate, severe form of discipline. And I go back to my roots. You kneel down, you raise up your hands, and you close your eyes. That's our primary discipline in this house. So if it's a mild offense, you only kneel down. If it's moderate, you are kneeling down and raising up your hands, which one of them don't, doesn't like to do. Kneeling down, they're all comfortable with it. If it's severe, you kneel down, you raise up your hands and you close your eyes. The other one doesn't even like to close her eyes at all. So the next thing, as they're going into that punishment, um, they say, what time are we standing up? So they've taught me to implement time. So for your offense, it depends on the time. If I say it's five minutes, then it's five minutes. They know that they are there for five minutes. So how did I involve them? So when we, I had the piece of paper and I wrote all their misbehaviors and all their attitude, then we now categorized it. They were there sitting down. We categorized it and we said, okay, so for this, you do this. For this, you do this. For this, you do this. So if you push, you may be kneeling down for three minutes. If you bite, you may be kneeling down, raising up your hands. So we were able to classify it and categorize it. So what did I do with that sheet of paper? I just stuck the sheet of paper on the fridge. So once you do it, you go to the fridge where the sheet of paper is. And then I think I brought a copy upstairs to our room. You go and look at what you've done and you go and look at the consequence and you just obey, gently, no disrespect, no throwing tantrums because you were there when we designed it and you promised to behave when we were designing it. So I think that actually helped me as well. So there was no shouting, there was no, um, because sometimes I get upset as well. There was no being upset. So we're able to agree and do things like that. 
So that's why I said it's very important to involve the child. And when you're involving the child, let them know that it's for their benefit. It's not mom or dad taking authority. It's not an adult taking authority. It's for your benefit. The rule in this house is if you don't want us to train you, you go out into the community. If you go out into the community, they will train you in a very hard way. And if they train you in a very hard way, people that are trained that way, they end up in jail. What's your choice? And then they have, so it, you, parenting needs to be, um, I will still talk about that in essence, it needs to be fun, it needs to be creative, it needs to be impactful. So again, when we are dealing with children, respect is a very, very important tool, which a lot of us don't, I, sometimes, I'm not saying I'm holy, I'm not saying my children are the best, but I think I'm learning to, you know, calm down, like they say in the um, Nigerian slogan. Next slide, please. Um, I can't see the next slide, Amy. If you just scroll up a little bit, please. Thank you. So again, this is another quote that I love. Bit Davis said, if you have never been hated by your child, you have never been a parent. Children don't like discipline. So when I say hate, it doesn't mean hate to the extent of stabbing, but you will hear things like, you are so mean, mommy. I hate you, daddy. So, <laughs> so again, or they will start telling their friends or families, my mom is mean, even if they can't say it to, their, to your face, it's just because, and when you start hearing things like that, know that you're doing the right thing and don't back down because yes, you don't want to hear those words. Yes, you don't want to, but think about the goal. Think about the end purpose for these children. Think about in the next 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years time, what you are able to achieve with God by your side with these children. Next slide, please. So misbehavior, I've, I've said that and I'll reiterate again. The aim of misbehavior is to teach and let the child learn. And this can be done in various ways. So the most important thing is you want the child to learn. Like I said, you're not taking authority. You want the child to learn. Um, now I can't say that. I will go back to my own slide. Um, I'm sorry about that. Okay. So the next slide, um, will be the first way to do it, like I tell people, is set rules and discuss the consequences. I've given you an example of what happens in my house. Rules are very important. Even as adults, we obey rules. In your offices, there are rules. When you go to the supermarket, there are rules. When you go to classes, there are rules. At the bus stop, there are rules. If you're not at the bus stop in UK when you're supposed to be there, no driver will wait for you. So rules are very important and you form a part of children um, children's lifestyle and also discuss the consequences um, beforehand. Let them know if you do X, the consequence is Y, Z. It's not when they do it, that is when you will start forming the consequence. No, let them be involved. Let them know the family do's and don'ts. In this family, we have a value. This is our value. In this family, we don't do this. In this family, because it's just like even Christianity. As a Christian, you have values. This is what we do, this is what we don't do. And I say, this is a two-way thing. Try to listen to the child. What do they want? So I've heard my child say, mom, I don't want you to hit me. That's it. And so as a parent, I have to start doing some things to make sure that that's put appropriately. So what does the child not like? Mom, I don't like you to shout at me. That's what the child doesn't like. Again, as a typical Nigerian mom, sometimes I say, I will shout. You don't behave, but I will try not to shout. So again, um, and sometimes when I'm shouting too much, I trust my husband, I will get him for you. So I try, I try to reduce it. So I have somebody checking, saying that all these things that you are shouting, it's not about shouting. And then the same thing the child will do. And the dad will just sit them down and speak with them. And but sometimes it's just the mother, you just you just think, I've been teaching you this all these years, and you should have known this. Oh, so again, do's and don'ts should be a two-way thing. What does the like, what does the child want? What does the child expect? And then what does the mom want? Well, I mean, what does the parent or the family want? What do you expect? And then you can discuss this, which is usually helpful, especially when children see that you're taking their perspective. You're, you're, you're consulting them, then it does make them more inclined and more cooperative. So again, when I say rules and um, consequences, now make sure you're following through with your consequences. 
do not delay consequences. But again, I say some consequences may not be done at that time. So you go to um, your child, you were, you're in a party, your child lies. Sometimes that's not the appropriate time and the appropriate place for that discipline. You may get home before you do it, but make sure you follow through. Whatever consequence you've put on ground, make sure you follow through because kids are very clever. Once they see that the consequence didn't take place, definitely they will try it on again. And I usually say consequence should be related to behavior. Now, sometimes you can't do this all the time, but it's very, very important that consequence is related to behavior. Let me give you an example. Okay, so in the morning, you have a morning routine. All children should have a morning routine and they know their morning routine. And maybe at night, on Friday night, they know that they have a spring time and they can watch TV to whenever. So part of the consequence is, if you get up in the morning and I have to correct you about your morning routine, or you are playing while you're supposed to be doing that morning routine or while you're supposed to be either laying your bed or brushing your teeth or saying your morning prayers, you are praying. That spring time or when next you have a play time, I've detected five minutes. So they know that for every time I have to remind you of your morning routine or for every time I have to do. So that time that you've used to play. So when it's time for your play time, you've missed five minutes. So it should be related to the behavior. It's not then that you'll be saying, Oh, you didn't lay your bed this morning. I'm not taking you to the party. How does going to that party, how does it, how does it connect with the time that the child has missed doing what he or she is supposed to do? Because sometimes we make some, um, some we, we have some consequences, but we can't follow through. Okay, so you've done this. I'm not going to take you to the next holiday. But you know that when you're going on that holiday, you can't leave that child. So don't say consequences that you can't follow through with. Make them simple and very realistic. Children learn basics. Don't go, don't, don't create a massive consequence that you know that after all, you can't even, you can't do that. I'm not going to buy you Christmas dress, but you know that by December, you've even forgotten. So let it be a consequence within a short space of time that the child will remember, the child will learn from. And that's very important. So um, back to the next one. Um, and be consistent, that's very important. So because I journal a lot, I like to write things down a lot. So whatever the consequences, I write it down, I, I stick it up in their room. So even if I forget and they want to play on my intelligence, I will go back to that sheet of paper and that sheet of paper must not go missing. This, there are days that it's gone missing, they will take it off the wall, they will hide it somewhere, that's allowed. But once I tell them that, once I bring another consequence, that if you don't find me that discipline sheet, then you, there's another consequence, then I'll find, they'll, they'll bring it out from wherever they've hidden it. So children are so clever. <laughs> children are so clever. So, and, and to, be, to be honest, sometimes you just sit down and you think about all these amazing things. And then people will say children are not smart. It, it's not true. <laughs> it's not true. So, but enjoy it while it lasts, but make sure you are doing that discipline. Make sure that you're doing the right thing by them because it's for their own good and it's for your own good, which I will expatiate on. Again, I let them know consequence is a choice because even the Bible is so beautiful. God gives us choices as big as God is. So I let them know consequence is a choice, okay? So I go by, if you don't do this, this is the consequence. Now, you have the choice to either do it or the choice to take the consequence. It's your choice. So at the end of the day, when they make their own choice, then I'll let them know. And most of the time, if I pass an instruction, I say, say it back to me. What did I say? Mom said, if I don't do my homework, then I wouldn't have time to play. Say it back to me. So that's the consequence. If you now decide to start playing and then I come back downstairs or I meet you not doing the homework, then you've made a choice. And then once I want to correct, I say to them, that's where the connection is. You don't have to shout. You connect with them. You may want to find out the reason why the homework has not been done or the reason why they've not done their morning chores or the reason why whatever it's expected to be done has not been done. And then I say, now you have made the wrong choice. I didn't make it, so there's no blame in here. Um, Mr. Raymond, you have made the wrong choice. I can see that you chose to do this instead of this. But next time, I'm sure you'll make the right choice. So it's the sense of responsibility. It's not me 
I've given you a choice. You have made the choice. You have to bear the consequence. And next time, learn that you need to do this because I'll follow through with the consequence. So it's very important. So the child doesn't think mommy is mean. The child doesn't think, oh, they don't like me. No, you are old enough to know what is right from what is wrong. And that's why even when they go to school, oh, my friend are doing this and so I have to do it. No, you don't have to do it. You made the choice to do it. So by the time you start passing this responsibility to them, they know that they are responsible for whatever choice they make and they know that there's a consequence for every choice they make. And then as a parent, that embodies you because sometimes we always want to blame ourselves for whatever happened. We try our best to make sure that we are doing the right thing. And then if things go wrong, we blame ourselves. Sometimes it's not our fault. And that is where it's very, very important to do some certain things which I will, which I will, um, which I will talk about. Um, so um, again, so um, Timmy, can you, can, can, I, um, can you show the next slide, please? Let me see if you've got the one, if I can continue from where. Yes. Um, I can't, okay, yeah, that's it. Okay, um, I love quotes a lot. So, um, and sometimes I live by the ones I like. So this is a quote by Issa Waters, which says, remember that the most important thing is not your child's behavior. The most important thing is your child. Look beyond the behavior and connect with your child. What do I mean by this? It's not every time that you're always shouting about the misbehavior and all of that. Why not look for what exactly led to that behavior? My child wakes up in the morning sometimes throwing tantrums, crying for no reason. To me, it's no reason. But when you ask, instead of saying, keep quiet, what's all this noise about? Why are you crying? You want to connect. And the reason why you are connecting and the reason why you are asking is, is there anything I can do to help? Sometimes in my house, what it takes is only a hug of reassurance. That's only what it takes. And it just doesn't, it doesn't even cost up to a minute. But please look beyond all that behavior. Oh, you did this, you did that, you did this, you did that. Why is the child doing it? And see if there's any way you can support. If you can support, read books, talk to people that can help. Because most of the time, before a behavior escalates, we see signs, there are some red flags that you can't just afford to ignore. Those are the times you need to start looking, seeking for help. If it means you as a parent going out of your way to get that help, then by all means, please do it. Now, um, another thing that's very important, so I've talked about um, discipline. Another thing that is very important that I enjoy doing is creativity. As a parent, you have to be extremely creative. If you don't be pray praying about creativity, that is something you can never, never take away from a child. Now, this is a quote by um, Get Profile. The best inheritance a parent can give his children is a few minutes of his time each day. When I say a few minutes, it may just be two minutes, it may be three minutes, it may be five minutes. It depends on how much you can spare. But each day, make sure that you're being friends with them. Each day, make sure you're both doing something. Now I'll tell you, I will share my own practical experience with you um, because um, I have a seven year old who has a very wild imagination. And because of his wild imagination, I have to run with those imagination. I have to run with those things he says. And for my six year old, anything the brother does, she follows suit. So I've had two people who actually have the same kind of energy. And so I have to, whether I like it or not, think ahead. Um, if you're not in our WhatsApp group, kindly join. So one of, our, um, one of our, the members of the WhatsApp group shared something yesterday and it was really, really fantastic. But it just made you, make, make you know that you need to think ahead of time. When they are coming and they are bringing all these things, See if you can run with it. If you can't run with it, sometimes it's garbage in, garbage out. If you feel it's nothing they're supposed to learn, if you feel it's not what they're supposed to be knowing, this that's the time to just garbage it out. As they're discussing it, if it's a suitable place and a time, make sure that you're discussing it at that moment. Next slide, please. So what do we do? Um, so be friends. It's very, very important. Um, now, I managed to be a member of a youth church, and I realized that most of the youths, what they say is that, they are not friends with their parents. So if they have any problems, they would rather come and speak with somebody who is older, like their mom or dad, but relates with them like a friend other than a parent, okay? So it just shows that quite a number of times we may be authoritative. Now, the way we do it in my house, you have to tell me about your day at school. 
So my day at school, it's very important. And when I say my day at school, not hours a day at school. Now, we, um, um, in my house, we want the children to be able to speak, not only to hear. So we have to make sure, we, we have to be intentional about them speaking Yoruba. So if they want to start my day at school, we started with the English version, my day, you will start like my day at school. You will say it as if you are writing an essay. So you start with the first subject. What did you do? What happened there? Who did you play with? What game did you play? Who did you sit with the, uh, when you were having your dinner? And uh, what did you take? What food did you take? What activity did you do? So from there, we went, so by that, with that, I'm, I happen to know all their friends. I happen to know all that is good. If their teacher doesn't come to school, I know that day. Because, that, and their teachers are so honest and they deal with them like, these people are our friends. And you'll be hearing, oh, Mr. X or Mrs. Y did not come to school today because she had an hospital appointment. And I'm like, what's your business with your hospital appointment? But it just makes you know that they know these children, like these children know them. Oh, my teacher just had a baby boy and he's blah, 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 blah. You know everything about their teacher, but all this, I got it from them. So we now had to change it into your version. I, I, I remember when I called Temi one day and they were sharing it with Demi. So they go, Ojo, Mini Leiwe, Ni Akoko, Moshe, and then we go about that. Let you know, Moshe, and we go about that. We are not there yet, <laughs> but, but we are trying our best. So they speak a lot of Yoruba. So we talk, you, you have to have that. So that day at school, to be honest with you, is not up to three minutes. But if you give our, uh, we have um, a, a queen in my house, the, the baby of the house, she's a queen. If you give her time, she can tell you about that day at school for 10 minutes and she won't allow anybody to have their go. So two minutes day at school. So every day they discuss that either with me or with daddy, whoever picks them up, that needs to be discussed even before lunch. So that may be for us, that's enough time with the kids. Then if we have extra, then we are spending extra. Now, another creativity, it could be a day out with mom. And what I usually encourage people to do, have day out with each child. It could be once in two weeks. So Tony's day with dad, Tony's day with mom. If, it, if it's girls, if you have only girls and you want to do girls, it could be once in two weeks, but make sure that that once in two weeks, you are consistent. As parents, we are busy. Like I said, don't set unrealistic goals. Don't go fat on me because some of them you cannot meet. And when I say day out, day out, some people will say, okay, we want to go out. Sometimes it's in, in just, just in my living room. It may be my day with my girl. And then we can just watch things like Dormoy. Um, Damoy, that's um, a very good, um, 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 a very good um, short clips videos. And the, the, the guy actually, so people act it out. So they, they um, um, and there are different topics, but the guy actually teaches so much that you cannot fathom and children can learn from. So short videos about kindness, short videos about racism, short videos about broken homes, just choose the one that suits you. So sometimes day out with my little girl could be, or, or day with mom could just be both of us sitting in the sitting room, watching maybe 10 minutes video of Damon, that's it. But during that period is when we can discuss other things. Oh, I don't want my brother to hear, I'm having a crush. That is when we discuss it. Don't be surprised in my house. At six and seven years, I've been hearing about crush. And so in the last six weeks, we've been discussing about crush and why it is important not to have crush at this time. So kids, when you spend time with kids, they will teach you what you can run with. They will let you know what you need, where you, they need your advice. Again, for some people, it could be game, game day or game night. It could be online games. Just go to, um, go online, Google age appropriate games. Baby Center, I, I won't stop talking about that app. It's a very great app. Um, Sister Temi has said maybe I have shares in it. I don't have shares, but they will teach you appropriate games that you can do with your child and it, it, it's going to be fun. But the most important thing is be friends with them. When you are friends with them, by the time they get to their teenage age, they, they wouldn't hide anything from you. They may, I'm not saying classically they wouldn't, but they will be free to talk to you because they know you have that listening ears and they, you, they know they have that time with you. And they know once it's that time, once it's our time, nobody, not even when their dad is calling me or before their dad even calls me, I'll say, look, I have a time with, with my little girl. It's just 10 minutes, just give us the 10 minutes. So everybody knows what is going on, no disturbance. And so when they know that they have that quality time, that quality relationship with you, then it's gonna be easy. Now, another thing I just invented is that we have a CAG meeting. 
because I'm a frontline health worker, um, during the pandemic, um, so many things were going on. And because of my mental health, I was attending most of them um, teachings about um, resilience, 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 how you can keep your emotional um, um, and mental health and all of that. So I, I put all this into, um, into one. And in the past, we've always discussed about kindness. So somebody asked about this in the group chat yesterday. So for me, we do a card meeting. Now, is kindness, affirmation, and gratitude. So I just point the word together. Now, like I said, set realistic goals. When we started, we started every night. When it's their bedtime, after prayers, we just talk about card. But I realized that I couldn't keep up with it. So sometimes it's just going to be three days and sometimes three times a week. And sometimes they will be the ones saying, oh, mommy, we've not had our card meeting. We've not had our card meeting. We've not had our card meeting. Now, mind you, I've been saying mommy, 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 because my husband works from home and he's very busy. And um, in the past, he has always worked outside um, where we live. So I've always been me and the kids. And so most of my life has always been centered around them. So it's like, I'm the main picture here, but dad is always available. So what does this kindness? So before you go to school, we may say your act of kindness, just you gave one act of kindness, it could be two, it could be three, then affirmation. The act of kindness is whatever you do. And my little madam will come home and start counting out act of kindness. Sometimes it's even at home. I've had, I'll just read out a few things that, I am, that they've shared with me. So they usually look forward to it. And um, my little madam will say, oh, I did three acts of kindness today. And the act of kindness, simple things I've, I've um, heard them say. So I sat with my friend when she was sad. I helped mom take an empty plate to the kitchen. I shared my pencil with Hillary. Those are their acts of kindness. But to me, I'm passionate about that because those are the little, little, little things that makes them know that people around me need help, that I need to be kind to other people. Affirmation, you have to start your affirmation with I am, because that's one thing I learned this year and has really helped me. And one thing about affirmation is that things you say, either affirmation, your Bible verses, whatever you believe in, the more you say it to yourself, the more it goes into your subconscious mind. The more it goes into your subconscious mind, the more you receive the strength and the power to carry it out. So some people are not geniuses. It's just that consistency on working on the mind because the mind is a powerful tool. So in my affirmation, I've heard, I am the smartest in my class. I'm beautiful, I am powerful. Now, gratitude. I always make sure that they say, everybody says, and we take it in turns. So you will say yours, um, mommy will say hers, um, the other person will say theirs. And then sometimes you say, somebody will go with kindness first, the other person will be the first to start affirmation, the other person will be the first to start gratitude. So for gratitude, I've heard, I'm grateful because I have the cutest sister ever. I'm grateful for nice weather. I'm grateful that I have a mommy who looks after me. So <laughs> the, these are things that we take for granted. But if you really look into yourself as a parent, these are the things you want to hear. These are the things that just melt your heart that I think I'm doing some, at least even if, even if we are not there yet, <laughs> I'm doing something right. Somebody is thinking about me. So yeah, I'm doing well. <laughs> <laughs> so that's very important to so create something you know, that the kids will enjoy, that will be fun, that they will look up forward to it. And because I discuss my work in my act of kindness, I have to discuss how I've been helpful to a patient today or how I've helped a colleague who was struggling. So they look and they see these things that it's not only children, it even happens with adults. So as they grow, it becomes a part of them that look, I have to look out for other people. I have to look out for things happening at home. And so it's very important. Just make sure you design something that is creative and that is fun. So again, mindfulness, this is very, very important. Now, mindfulness is the practice of purposely bringing one's attention in the present, and I've discussed what that is um, just earlier. Now, what's very, very important in mindfulness is accept God's love first and self-love. So my little girl, because um, she went into a, an acting and a dancing or singing school, I saw her talent and I decided to put her there. And then when she came back, oh, I want to have a YouTube channel. It's okay to have a YouTube channel, okay, which I was encouraging. And then I had so I can hear how many people like, how many likes are. Uh, that likes is not what we are looking for at the moment. So I thought this is the time to build that self-love and God's love. Because what she wants, the reason why she wants the YouTube channel is for other people's validation. And I can't, I can't deal with that. Even as adults, you post something, you're looking at how many people that have likes. Do you understand? And that changes your mood. For some people, I'm not saying except you've grown out of that, but for a six-year-old looking for validation from other people, I don't think I can deal with it. So let her know that there's somebody that loves him or her first. 
God first, even before mommy and daddy, God first, and then self-love. Let her know how beautiful her eyes is, how beautiful her cheeks is, how beautiful their nose is, the color of their skin is, everything about them, how beautiful it is, you know? Pay compliments. It's not bad to pay compliments to even adults or children. Oh, you look so cute. Oh, you look so fantastic. You know, so that whatever it is that they get outside, once they come back and say, oh, somebody called me a fat, a fat girl. Is it that you reorientate them to say that is the that is the um that is the cutest fatness you've ever seen? Or you just look for something that will make sure that that child has self-love. Love from family and love from God. That's very important. I love poems. And thanks to a friend of mine, she's in our WhatsApp group as well, Tolu. The first poem she told me about, because once I, I see people who have the same energy as me or passionate about me, I mean, at the same way I am, the next thing, if you post anything, the next thing is you're hearing a phone call from me. How did you manage? What happened? How did you get your child to do that? And all of that. Because parenting is a journey you can't do alone and nothing prepares you for it. You can only try. So poems. So there's the first poem that my kids learned at age three is A Black Child. And that in the world of racism, I think that was very, very important to me. I can't allow them go out to that world without having a fight about who they are and just really say, this is me. So A Black Child, um, it's, it's by an American girl, a three-year-old girl, but very fantastic. So if you have children who are still learning, do you know who you are? Um, you can be anything you want to be. That's the line it, it goes on. So when somebody tells them that, oh, you can't do this, you can't do that, that's not possible. You, they have to tell them back that because this is a point they learned every day, they were saying every day, so it's just part of them. Encourage reading books. So many books out there. There's um, library, there's online library. A friend of mine recently um, has um, a, a library online and she formed a book club. And you'll be amazed at the book, books um, that I had to order from there entrepreneurship books for three years old, four years old, five years old, you know, so encourage them to read books. Again, you know what you want. The first thing is you've planned. What are your priorities? For us, we wanted children who are academically intelligent and we wanted children who are happy and confident. But um, later, I mean, a few years ago, um, there was a man who was arrested. And the reason why he was arrested was because um, he was a serial killer. He killed two other women outside Europe and he killed them in the same vein and he had sex with them, dead bodies. Now that experience actually changed. That was why I said prioritize, we had to reprioritize. And when I heard this resume, this guy went to Oxford and went to Cambridge University. So I was like, that's academic excellence. Let it come down. I want a confident and a happy child. So if that child was happy or if that man was happy, he was in his thirties, if he was happy, I don't think he would have resorted into things like that. But again, things have gone down, the, things may have gone down the drain. But for me, I think at that point in time, we have to sit down and reprioritize that. Look, academic excellence is not, somebody who went to Oxford and Cambridge still ended up, you know, having that kind of lifestyle, then we have to reprioritize. So Bible memory verses, they are very important. If they're not going to churches or if they're whatever religion you're practicing, but for us, it's the Bible. So we have the memory verses. They have to say, they have to repeat it. They, we have to stick it up on the wall, stick it up everywhere so that they can remember. And then we have, we have to practice it. And then we have um, affirmation. Again, I won't stop say, talking about affirmation, different kind of affirmation, different, different, different ones. If you don't know where to start, Abraham Lincoln has lots of, affirm um, lots of affirmation, lots of things that you can, write and let your child recite let your child and it's not about reciting explain it to them let them say it over and over and over again in their bathroom i have one which says um i can i can do anything i want to do only i can do it better okay so everywhere in my house is pieces of paper just sticking things on the wall and so that i have my little girl who likes looking at the mirror she comes in all she wants to do is look at her hair look at her mirror so in front of that mirror you will see about one one to two bible verses and affirmation as she's looking at her mirror i will say just read it okay and i'm not going to force them okay but it's just making it creative and just say okay what is there just read it to me oh i don't feel like reading. just read it to me i can't remember you know things like that just be creative um i think you've gone up a little bit open appreciation i've talked about that that's very important daily confession your child has to have a daily confession. And again, review it and change it from time to time. Sometimes it depends on the behavior. Look for mine, 
he, he usually throws tantrums, he usually gets upset easily. And then we have to go into daily confession. Say, um, one of our favorite daily confession is that um, you can be angry, be angry, but do not sin. Okay. So I let them know that the Bible is our manual. We live by the Bible. So whatever you believe and whatever you know that in future can help these children be independent without having to, because in school, I remember you will see people like people, your, your age mates and your classmates praying fervently. That's what they've learned from home. That's what their parents believe that can sustain them. And so whatever it is, just invite it in your children. Now discuss emotions and be honest. Let children see you be happy. Let them see you be sad. Let them see you being hungry. Let them see you being upset. Let them see you crying. These are emotions. Let children know that adults face these emotions. It's natural. Boys don't cry. Men don't cry. It's not by that, though, because those who don't cry, they don't speak up when they need the help. Or they just feel that, oh, this is not, I, am, I can't tell anybody because it shows I'm a weakling. No. And then if they can't speak up because they think they're a weakling, then they don't get the support. They don't get the help. And so, again, that's, that's a vicious cycle for, for destruction. Please. Emotions is very important. Discuss it openly. When you're crying, let them know you're crying and this is why you're crying. Um, avoid open-ended questions. That's one thing that has helped me. So what will you eat this morning? Ah, because you will start from list and all of that. So if I have in mind that these are the two things that I want to give, what do you want to eat? I have this and I have this, choose one. But by the time you have leave a long list, as in, uh, I want rice. No, no, mommy, I don't want rice. Uh, I want this and that. And then it, it just, it's, for me, sometimes it's a bit time consuming, except you really have the time. And then when you need a rest as a parent, your mindfulness is important. When you need a rest, call family gathering. And what do I mean by family gathering? Let the kids know. Let the kids know, this is my time. I need to rest. I'm going to rest for an hour. I don't want any disturbance, you know? Be honest with them. Mommy is tired because, daddy is tired because, daddy needs a rest because, and um, you take it up from there. Um, so now, Age appropriate sex education is very, very important. This world now, we can't, um, I can't tell you all you need to be saying, but most important for age specific, identify body parts, call them by their names. This is not we, we, this is penis, penis is penis, because that's what perpetrators outside will call it to them, okay? And then they will now think it's a fanciful name. No, identify them by their names. Let, 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 let them sing songs. There are so many songs out now on YouTube and all of that that children can learn from. Let them draw posters. Some will say pant and vestrue. So pant and vestrue, once they put on their underwear in the morning, just tell them wherever the pants and your vest is covering, they're your private areas. You don't play with them. You don't allow anyone to play with them. You don't play with other people's because it's easier to say, uh, don't touch it. They don't, they don't touch it, uh, blah, 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 blah. Let them know there's no game. Don't do any game that is, uh, you'll be doing any game that, don't sit on any, anybody's tights or laps. And if anyone says, don't tell mommy or don't tell daddy, it's a very bad secret. Reiterate that it's a bad secret. Don't allow anyone kiss you directly on the lips. In my house, um, when I did the love language test, I know my mine was um, physical touch and um, my children too is physical touch. So if there's anything you can see in my house, in the next half an hour or every half an hour is a hug and a kiss. That's one thing in my house, but we don't kiss on the lips, never, okay? So do what is appropriate, but let these children know. So if your mom cannot kiss you on the lips, we is now coming to kiss you. And then we said, even the kiss, it has to be just within our family. It has to be just mom. It has to be my parents grew up. I grew up with physical touch. My, my, I still kiss my mom and dad. My dad and mom still kiss me, but it's on the cheek. So they kiss their grandchildren. That's acceptable. But strangers, no, it's not allowed. So don't go out with strangers without telling your parents. Don't expose your private parts for selfie, especially when it comes to our teenage. And she is my phone. She is me. It's not your phone. Anything that goes on your phone, it's it's not so secretive anymore. Um, and then for girls, always tell them when they're in skirts, when they're in dresses, they need to be sitting with their tights together. And no private games, no private part games with anyone. I've said that. And wash and clean your private part yourself or even under supervision. So um, this brings me back to the last, um, I think this is part of my last slide, prayer. I don't know how I can emphasize that enough, but I think I have lived by it and it has worked for me and it has helped me, okay? Um, because like I said, parenting journey is not a journey you can do on your own. And there's some things that will be happening that you, you, you don't understand. There are some challenges that 
you know that you can't face alone. You just need the help of God. But most importantly, now Isaiah 54 verse 13 says, and all thy children shall be thought of the Lord and great shall be the peace of thy children. And when I read this verse of the Bible, I just thought, if my children can have peace, automatically I have peace. That's what it means to me. So in their twenties, in their thirties, I want them to be peaceful children. Because what it automatically means is that definitely the family is at peace. So it's very, very important. Look for an anchor scripture that works for you. Now I'll give an example of Susanna Wesley. Susanna Wesley is the mother of John and um, Charles Wesley, who um, are actually the pioneers of Methodist Church. And because I happened to read the book from um, God's Generals while in school. And then I read something about this woman that she spent two hours daily in prayer with apron on her head. No husband and 19 children. Please, how can somebody with 19 children still have two hours for prayer? So I think when I grew up, I was like, what, whatever it is, she was praying for her children because otherwise two of her children wouldn't be pioneers of, um, um, of Methodist. Now, what I did, what I have done with my own life is I've said, I've allocated a day in a week that I will meet with God concerning my children. They don't have to have problems. They don't have to have challenges. That is when I pray for the wisdom because sometimes, Parenting and discipline runs out of style. If you use this discipline today, if you want to use it tomorrow, it doesn't mean it will automatically work. Out. Is it that they got used to it or they just feel um, it, it, it wouldn't have the impact that it had initially. So that is where I ask for God. Um, that, that's where I ask God for wisdom and steps and, and things I need to take. And um, also Abraham Lincoln said something. He said, I remember my mother's prayers and they have always followed me. They have clung to me all my life, which means even in adulthood, the mother's prayers were still working, working for him. So um, um, I don't know if I have another slide. Um, and also when you're praying, let the children be involved, teach them how to pray. Pray about the family request. So this I heard from someone and it has practically worked. So we want to buy a iPad, we want to buy uh, cars, we want to buy anything. We say the prayers together. And so when the thing now becomes a reality, they say, ah, God answers prayers. I say, it's true, God answers prayers because that's one thing they've learned. So teach them to do everything that you feel that will sustain them when you are no more. And um, I will leave us with this last um, quote, which says, the sign of great parenting is not the child's behavior. The sign of truly great parenting is the parent's behavior, which means the kids are watching. Whatever you do, they're watching. So you are their first teacher before anyone else. Thank you. Thank you very much. It still sounds as though you rushed through it, even though you have actually spent a good deal of time. But I think every minute has been worth it. That's been amazing. Thank you so much. There have been so many things you've touched on, so many new things to learn. I'm hoping everybody has been taking notes like I have. Um, think of the goal. It's not just about your parents' behavior. It's about your child. It's not just about your child's behavior. It's about your child. So keep that in view. So I've noticed a lot of great things. And then CAG meetings, that's really innovative and creative. And about having a plan for your children. Who do you want your children to be? And when you talked about the affirmations of your children, it sounds like the affirmations that my parents used to say in the house. Oh, the most handsome young man, the most brilliant. <laughs> and when my mother was mentioning it, I said, that is not what everybody does. Some people feel eh, it makes some children feel superior. It makes them so, so, and so. But I don't think that there's a way you can avoid affirming your children if you want them to be grown up, strong, and confident. Um, and of course, it should have its source in God not just in who they are, but in who God is and who God has made them. And I think God is the only one that has the blueprint. We see in part, we understand in part, and is as we keep going back to him, he keeps showing us, like you've mentioned in your final words about having newer ways to do things. And like in African parlance, they talk about the crayfish that can bend and the one that cannot bend. So children, that's the stage where they can bend. And I think, we need to let our children be children. I think children grow up much too fast in the age we live in. It is so essential that we are intentional. And you've touched on so many great things. Thank you so much. Okay, so our next speaker is Mrs. Adedayo Ayedu, who happens to be Mommy Ayedu, Mommy of the Praising Child. So it's a great privilege to be sharing this occasion with um, 
my mother, um, who is, uh, I can say she's very close to me. Um, I can actually call her like my friend. So she always knows what's going on in my life. Um, and she's been, she along with my father has been a huge support. Um, so you're welcome and thank you for gracing this occasion. So I will just share the screen. So good evening, everyone. It's a great privilege for me to be on this platform. And I'm happy to say one or two things that I have earned, learned in my life. And then um, to, to impact it to other people. This afternoon, I'll be talking about intentional parenting, loving and leading. My sister Shola has done a lot of work, especially on the children aspect of it. But I will just be talking on, an, on another dimension. Topic is loving and leading on intentional parenting. As my sister has said, intentional parenting can be a purpose to deliberate a planned type of parenting. And origin of parenting is in God himself. The, leaving the father and mother cleave to the wife to multiply and be fruitful. That's what God has said in Genesis 1 28. And we find that, that the, the Bible says that they were not ashamed, which means they say so any, anything they want together. In my own case, even before we got married, and we have already talked about adoption and making our home a home of solace for anybody. And to the glory of God, God has been using us in that dimension. The, I, I won't say the beginning of parenting, that it has its root from God. It is God's prerogative was to give human, for God to give, to give God joy and pleasure. Initially, it was designed for two people, but variations exist with single parents doing fine with God's help, bringing up successful and vibrant children. If they are aware and they recognize that those children are God's own and not theirs, and that they are just caretakers. There are different types of parents. If they can be a biological parent, then you can have biological parents, step parents, foster parents, adopted parents, carers, and guardians. These are all, you can be all. If a, a parent can be everything to this, this one. For instance, while we were growing up, we always have a lot of children in our house. And my mother and father are the parents of all of them. And they treat us equally, everybody equally. And I grew up in that, in that type of environment. The same thing, my, my husband has many brothers and sisters. I think there are about nine. It's a, it's a big family on its own. So it's no big deal for us to, to, to be able to operate in the area of intentional parenting. Children are a gift from the Lord. They are a reward from him. Can see that one in Psalm 127 one. Every child, parents do well to record intentional parenting. Parents do well to recognize that the children are not theirs, but they are caretakers 
for a period of time. Every child is a sacred trust from God to bring up, to, to bring up for the honor of God and a channel through which God's blessings can flow to the whole world. So we are accountable to God for the way we treat the children God brings our way, whether biological, in any form, your greatest contribution to the kingdom of God may not be something you do, but someone you raise. And that is the area many people are failing. They, when they have other people in their homes, they treat them in a different way from their own children. So that those children will feel that they are not part of the family, which is not God's way, because God is looking at us. And if we recognize that every child that comes our way is from God, and God wants, we are going to be accountable for them the way we treat any child, as any child God has brought on our, our way on the judgment day. And we shall realize for every good job we do for God, there's always a reward, both earthly and eternally. For God is not unjust. For God is not of just, he will not forget how hard you have worked for him and now you have shown your love to him by caring for other believers, other children, as you still do. If we think we are just doing it for doing sake, we are mistaken. There is a reckoning. Everyone that God brings away is for a purpose. Loving and leading. There is no way you will love your child and you will not want to lead them the right way. This assumes you know the right way or are trying to find out. And that's why we are finding link. We are trying to improve ourselves. We are trying to find out how we can be better. This is easier for a parent when God, who created the child, child, is showing you the right way. Loving. There is no such thing as loving your child too much. Loving them cannot spoil them. There is no fear in love. There is no harm or evil in love. There are some typical ways we can show love to children to enable them become healthy and well-balanced individuals and take their rightful place in society. I think Sister Shola has mentioned quite a few of those ones. But there are typical ways we can show love to our children. Sensitivity, parental instincts, make parents sensitive to the baby's cry for food or for attention. When you are, <coughs> you know when they are hungry or when they need attention. And when a parent is sensitive, we always know if there is anything going wrong with his or our children. <laughs> Another way we can show love for our children is by provision of all their basic needs, like provision, food,
and shelter. I don't think we can we can be able to be intentional parents without having enough food or having a house to live in anyway. So that is an essential thing in intentional parenting. And one thing I realized in intentional parenting that even if anything, God will always send somebody, send an angel to you to meet that needs because you are working for him and not for yourself. As long as you are doing it the way of the divine. You can also show love by sacrifice for children. There are so many things we deny ourselves many times because of their needs. It is a selfless service. If your children need something and then you to you need something, you will have to forgo your own just to make sure they are comfortable. So it is a sacrifice that showed it, the type of love that we have for our children and then um, the willingness to change and adapt to the child's schedule at your own expense, like changing jobs or staying at home. I remember many times there, were time, there was a time when my husband had to, wanted to travel out. And uh, when he realized the needs of the children, he said, ah, let me stay. He had to forego the work. Many times I want to go for maybe a course or something, I have to, I have to say, ah, let me go on part-time instead of full-time. Because my children are always happy when they see me, at, when they meet me tomorrow when I come to their school. There was an incident that um, and when I when I changed my job, I when I turned to be a caterer, when I become a caterer, that that's work really is very demanding and that's why the the way the work was very demanding. I always have time for my children. I always close from this, from my restaurant in the afternoon to make sure I'm with, with my children after school. Look at their the work they have done in school. Talk to them. Sleep together. We chat together before I go out again. I may go again in the evening to the restaurant. Many times people will say, ah, auntie, ah, we have waited, waited, waited. I say, ah, okay, if my home is not in good order, do you think I'll be able to open this restaurant? And those are some of the sacrifices one has to make. Why? Because of your children. There are many people who want to do a full-time job. They cannot until the children are grown, grown up because they want to give um, the children time. And you find that, that many people who don't make some of these sacrifices. They, and the two parents are abroad, the children are in Nigeria. By the time they come back with the money, the money will not be able to compensate for the loss they have. And the, and the problem they have caused on those children. So as, as a, an intentional parent, we need to be able to make sacrifice for our children. You have to be willing to change and adapt to their schedule at your own expense many times. School, changing of job, staying at home, protection from both inside and outside danger. In line with this, I will just say it is God. Which parent can show love to their children? Continue. Protection from internal and external dangers. 
there are so many things just around now, especially in this uh, present in, in present day. Day. And that is one of the reason. That is one of the essence of what my sister Shola was talking about: teaching your children what they should know, what they should not know, what they should do, and what they should not do. I remember there was a time I have um, the house help and a relative in my house, and um, as it's my usual usual habit, I'm always very prayerful, whether I, whether I'm saying it out or inside. And I was in my shop, and the Lord just spoke to me. I should start praying for my 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 one of my children. My mind did not even go to the one that I let her to with two people. My mind was going to the one that was in the body house. So I just started praying. And when my husband came and he was going to pick the children, and I said, this is what the Spirit of God told me, that he to, should join me and be praying. So he went, he picked the ones that are in the school. And by the time he got home, the two people that we thought we have let our small baby with have been using, have been putting the hands of that baby inside the electric socket and it's shocking the baby. But thank God I always dress well for my children before I go and go out with socks, with shoes, with everything. So when my husband got home and the, my little uh, child was just taking the taking the dad to where what they were doing for him. By the time that he got home, you can see that his face has it has changed. He said they put my hand and it shocked me. They put my hand and it shocked me. Ha! Ah. So you can imagine that if it has not been that we have been praying, only God knows what we will have meant in the in the house. But God sensitized us so that we're already praying to avert the problem, what they, they will have caused for that little child. And that is why we, we, we as parents cannot protect on our own, but we need the help of God, divine help to assist us in protecting our children, both from internal and external dangers. God will help us. We have to teach them skills and values. I think Shola has said um, a lot about that, like cooking, washing their clothes, tidying up the house, even changing tires as they grow. You cannot say because you have an external helper, it's no guarantee that you should not train your own children as well, because one day they will leave you. And it is for their own good that uh, you are doing all this for them. There are many people because they are people who are doing everything for the, for the children. They will just leave the children to be doing nothing. All the, the thing, everything that the children will do is just to, to, to eat, read if they want to read and watch television, nothing more. And in that area, you are not helping your, your child. You are not giving the child a good training, a good background. The child will not be able to be independent to be on its own. Then I think Shola has talked a lot about discipline. The child that God loves, he disciplines. Even God disciplines us as parents. Is if you don't, if you love your child, you will discipline the child if he's misbehaving. And I think uh, Sister Shola has talked a lot about that. So discipline is very essential and is very necessary for children. If you don't discipline your child, you don't love that child. Because one day, it will come back to you and tell you to your front that, ah, Shabi, you didn't teach me this, you didn't teach me that. So for us to be accountable, we need to discipline our children. You must support the interest 
and dreams of your children. It, it, like buying the toys that they like, the one that likes uh, books, you buy books. From personal experience, there was a time one of my children would say, and she wants blackboard, she wants to be a teacher. So we buy blackboard and everything about blackboard for her. The other one we say, I want an engineering tool. And that time they used to sell uh, an engineering toy called workshop wheelies. So we buy for the other one. So we always encourage them and support whatever interest that they want. Even though the two of them are now not even doing what they said they will do now. But at that time, what they want is what we always do for them to, to boost their interest and uh, to support them, to show that uh, we are with them. We love what they are trying to do. And uh, all, the next thing is always encourage them, saying positive and life-giving words to them as an authority figure. Parents have a lot in their mouth to bestow on their children. If you are saying something good to your children, they too will learn to be saying something good to themselves and to other people. I always tell people that whenever you get somewhere, always look for something that is good to say, not saying, not saying uh, the negative things. If you are always seeing the good things first, then it will be raising the positive, negative things and it will be encouraging life. And that is why as children of God and uh, with the way we are brought up, we should always be saying the right things to our children. And not only to our children, it should be positive in every area of our life. To our children, to other people. Because the way you say it is the way it will be. Because there is power in the mouth, in our mouth, there is power in our tongue. Parents and love. Ways parents can show love to their children. Praying for them and blessing them. I think Sister Shola has talked about that as well. We should always be praying for our children and blessing them. And one day, one day, it will yield good fruits to us. But it, um, the, there is a saying that says, if a family that prays together stays together. If you are always praying for your children and blessing them, when they too, they have their own homes, they will be doing the same thing for their own children as well. And it will continue. Parental love can be demanding. It comes with multitasking, but that can be fulfilling and beautiful. If in spite of loving, you see having many difficulties with your child, seek help early from trusted mentors or professionals. Parental love can change so many things in our lives. In us, our sleeping habits will change. Because you may be sleeping and you hear ah, something is wrong with one of the child, you have no choice but to get up. It gives you less free time. And so that's why you have to organize you have to be organized. In my, in, 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 uh, in my own experience, when I was having my, my children, I don't normally wake up at night. Right from the day I have my baby, I start timing them. Every three, three hours, I, I, I breastfeed them. If they cry before that three hours, I look whether it's their nappy. If it's not nappy, I give them water. 
So right from childbirth, they are already used to that routine. And many times when people come to my house, they don't even know that I have a baby in the house because they will cry. And by the time they will cry, but before they even cry, when it's around that three hours, I know the next thing to do for them. So as children, uh, as, um, as parents, we need to organize ourselves and to make things easy and comfortable for us. So when I start that from childbirth, later I increase it to every four, four hours, later five, five hours, later six, six hours. And so because of this, it gives me time for myself to do whatever I want to do during the day and it enables me to sleep. But a lot of parents, when they are raising up their babies, Anytime the baby is crying, this breast they will put in the, in the baby's mouth. Once the baby is crying, it's, it's breast milk. See, ah. And it's not that you, you don't love the baby, but for your own good and for the baby's good, the baby will be able to sleep very well and soundly when it's used to that your own routine. Even though your sleeping habits may change a bit and you have less free time. And at this time of, as well, you know, you have to curtail your spending. When you realize how much you have to spend on, on your baby, on the children, your own spending has to reduce. So your financial stock is affected as well. And as a wise parent, your children, they are the wise parents, intentional parents that love your children. Your children, um, your children need to come first because you can always cope. And you should have unconditional love for your children. Parental love is unconditional and it can change you and your children for better. No matter what your children may be, even, no, even if they do any, something that is so bad and that you cannot even think of, your child is still your child. You, still, you should still love him or her. You still have unconditional love for him or her. You can see in the, in the Bible what happened when the prodigal son came. Despite that, despite the fact that he has spent his, his money lavishly, you can see that his father ran, he didn't even walk, he ran to meet him. And that is love in action, parental love in action. You must believe in the greatness of your child. You, you shouldn't talk down on your children. You must believe that your children will be great. You speak it to them, you will pray it into their lives and God will back it up. Increase patience and tolerance for flaws or mistakes of your children. I think I've talked about that. So loving gives you a lot of patience and tolerance for flaws and mistakes, regardless of anything that they might do. But because you love your child, you will have patience and you have tolerance, zero tolerance for all their flaws and we correct them in love. Be talking on leading now. Effective parenting is leading by example. This is part of intentional parenting. As a parent, you are just everything. A leader, you are wearing many hats, teacher, mentor, counselor, guide, manager of both resources, 
manager of so many things, manager of their health, of the home of everything. So to be able to be a good, a good leader, your parenting stance may be different due to culture a bit, but it is important to have guiding principles for our children. For example, the Bible for Christians. We can see in the life of Abraham, what Abraham's servant and what God said about Abraham. God said, I know he will teach his children that he can trust Abraham, that he will teach his children about him. I, I don't know, can God say that about us? Children observe how we treat them and others, and they learn how to behave. When your children know that the way you treat other people is the way you will treat them, they will learn how to behave. But when your children know that uh, you will always give them preference if they do anything wrong, automatically that's the way they will be behaving. So they are always observing what you are doing. A parent's interaction with their child may impact the brain development of the child and future and future outcomes in life. The way you interact with your children, the principles that you are incorporating into your children matters a lot. Ways to live by example. Speak positively, watch what you say. Avoid vulgar, abusive, abusive and derogatory statements to yourself, to your children and others. Show them how to be respectful. If you are respectful yourself, your children too will be respectful. No matter where you are living. I remember when we were abroad and many of our friends, they were calling their parents by name. And one day my daughter asked me and said, ah, can I call my daddy by name too? I said, no, don't call him by name, call him daddy. Because um, we are Nigerians, we don't call our, our father by name, we are by name, we have respect for our, for our parents. So when you show them how to be respect, respect, respectful, they too will be respectful. And be a good listener, that is communication. It's very important. When you are communicating with your child, you will know what is inside him or her. Even, even now, I, I still have some children that are in secondary school in my house now. Sometimes I call them and ask them, what is, what is happening? How is this? How is that? I start asking them questions about their school, about their teachers, about their studies. Communication is very important so that you can know the areas where you can help them. Take care of your responsibility. Our spiritual responsibility is teaching our children what we believe. If you are a Christian, you teach them about Jesus, what you believe about Jesus. The life of Jesus, the word of Jesus. Emotional. Take, their, take care of their emotional responsibility as well. Let them know. Shola, Shola, Shola has really talk about that. Let them know you can cry. You can be emotional too. After all, Jesus wept. So don't pretend for them. When you are anoint, let them know you are anoint. And be responsible for their financial upkeep and physical well-being. When you look at your children, 
many times, some uh, especially with um, boys and men, when something is wrong with them, they start hiding it. They don't want you to know until you see it. But and that is why parents have to be uh, to um, parents have to be very. What do I want to say? Parents have to be discerning to know whether something is wrong with their children or not. Teach them about your faith and model it to them. Model what you believe to them. Like having an altar, a family altar every day in your home. In our house, many people know, if you come to our house, you must have family altar with us. It is a must. If you are staying in our house overnight, there must be a family altar. Not to talk of children that we are raising. Another area is to take good care of yourself. You cannot say because you are taking care of your children, you are not taking good care of yourself. The two of them go, they re pursue. Take care of yourself to look good. And the last one, but not the least, do your own work well. Your business. Hello, please mute yourselves if you are not muted. Sorry. Mommy, you can continue. I remember my, my, and somebody, my daughter was coming from a journey one time and somebody was telling, saying it in the, in the bus that ah, all the lecturers, they have a price. And my daughter was so furious and said, go and ask for my, my father. This is his name. My father didn't have a price. My, you can't buy my father with anything. And it's a fact, it's because he has, they have seen that type of integrity in their dad. That's why she's able to talk like that. My husband has never sold handouts before all this, all this lecturing life till he retired because he didn't believe in it. Because some lecturer will say when you buy handout, 20%, you have already got 20% or you've got 40%. If you have got 40%, I've got to start buying handouts. What do you want to read again? So whatever work you are doing, you must do it with integrity. Even in my catering business, people will come to me and say, ah, we want you to cater for us, uh, but we want you to put uh, extra money. That is our own, that is our own. Put extra money on it. Ah. I say, ah, I don't do such thing. So I'm noted for that. They know I will not do such thing. I will not do that type of business. We have to go with your business. In fact, I was a day, I, I was even looking at myself. Ah, Am I backsliding? What right have you? Why do you have so much confidence to come and be telling me I should put so so amount in what uh, you want to order? And that is your own, you know? So let your children know what you stand for, even in your career and in your business. You see them about children are young quite impressionable and incorporate what they see and hear into their own lives. If your children see that you're always telling lies, they too will learn how to be telling lies. If they see that you're always cheating, they, they, they too will start cheating. It is very important that parents set the right examples for their children. Monitor them and be interested in what they are doing and have conversations with them. That is what is breeding all these Yahoo Yahoo boys we have now in our country. Because parents don't monitor their children. There is no intentional parenting at all. They don't monitor them as long as they are able to bring money for them. That is all. And God is going to ask us, we are accountable to God. We are not accountable to this children. We are accountable to God. Let us do what is right and teach them the right thing so that in the end, 
the Lord will say, well done, my, my servant. Negative examples can be detrimental to a child's development. Yes, when a child is always seeing you doing wrong things, why wouldn't he or she be doing the same thing? <laughs> it is important that parents set the right examples for their children. So, negative examples, as I've said, is very detrimental to children's development. Try and give positive examples to your children. Practical parenting. Direct your children onto the right path. And when they are older, they will not leave it. That's in Proverbs 22, verse 6. Even if they leave it, they will come back to it because you have already given them the foundation, the right foundation. Practical parenting. You want to boost their self-esteem through affirmative words. Be their greatest encourager. If nobody will encourage your children, encourage them yourself. Even if they come home dejected, unhappy, encourage them. If they feel they cannot do anything, something, tell them they can do it. They can make it. Through affirmative words, they will, their self-esteem will be encouraged because as a parent, you are their greatest encourager. Teach them to be good and humble when they are young. Because your parents are so proud, they see other people as nothing. I know so many people, how they treat their carers. They treat them like shit. But God is going to ask them, they are going to be accountable for those children. So set boundaries and be consistent with your discipline. Your, your children must know what you want and what you don't want. And they should know that if they go outside the boundaries that you have set, they will be punished. Mm -hmm. I talk a lot about that as well. It is very good to discipline our children. And as I've said earlier, even God disciplines us. If, if you love your children, you discipline them. When you don't discipline them, you don't love them. Be ready to be flexible with your parenting style. Make communication a priority. Make time for your children. There are some parents, they go out from morning, from Monday to Friday to work and they come back at night. Before the children wake up, they have gone out. And then by the time they come back, the children are already sleeping. That's not a good parenting, practical parenting. Always make time for your children. Make sure you give them time that they, you can talk, you can discuss. So that's the area where communication is very important. Show unconditional love in spite of challenges. No matter the challenges they're having, show them that you still love them and you are in support of them, you encourage them. Be a good role model. That is practical example. The example we set for our kids, how to act when things don't go our way is much more important than the rules we set for them. I like that from Leo Babatka. For yourself as parents, take control of your thoughts by divine help. 
I want to thank God. God has helped me. I'm always seeing in my mind in a positive way. And I'm either thinking in my spirit or thinking of something to pray about or thinking of something good. When you think when you, you your thoughts are in line with divine with the divine, then you can receive help at the right time. And that is why, as children of God, we just take control of your thoughts. Some people are going to church. What they are, what they will are on the way to the, on the way to church. Their mind is not focused on what they are going to do in the church. Is the God that is sitting right, right and beings they will be looking at? Is the house that they are they have done finish building? Their mind is just drifting here and there. So we need to take control of, of our thoughts. And it's only God that can help us and he will help us. If we realize it's something that we need. When you don't know that you have a need, there is no way you can ask for help for it. Take initiative. Don't wait for others to lead. I'm talking to, your, to ourselves now as parents. Prioritize your activities and create time for your children. Don't be a debtor. Don't make borrowing your lifestyle. Because if you start borrowing your children too, we think is a, is a good thing. And be spending recklessly and be borrowing, borrowing money. So avoid that. Be humble. Be willing to learn and accept what you don't know. And accept that you don't know everything, everything. You don't know it all. None of us know it all. We are all imperfect parents. And that's perfectly okay. Tiny humans need, need not perfection. Thank God we are connecting to find the link. And that's where we are learning more. I've learned a lot from Shola now. If I've not used it for my children, at least my grandchildren are still there. And my great grandchildren are still coming. I will still use some of it for them. So we are all imperfect parents. Mm -hmm. In conclusion, anyone, anyone who claims to own a child is exhibiting ignorance because both the parent and the child are the property of the divine. Only God can give us the blueprint to be a successful and intentional parent. We become intentional parents through wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of our children. Parenting is an opportunity given to all of us we will do it better if we choose to be intentional about it. May God help us to be intentional parents. Amen. Amen. No other woman. No other, no other work transcends that of righteous, intentional Parenting by Rosel M. Nelson. Thank you very much, Ma. I think we've learned a lot from these um, these uh, presentation. It's been it's been very very <laughs> very deep and insightful. Thank you very much. Um, I will just spotlight you all again. I think we've had a lot to learn. You've mentioned about how parenting changes us, how parental love changes us. Um, this question is to Mommy Ayedu now. Would you say that um, it makes us more anxious? Having parental love makes us more anxious people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very anxious. Ma? But yes, <laughs> but at the same time, 
the Bible says we should cast all our anxiety on God. So that helps us in reducing our anxiety. When we are, we, 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 we return it back to God. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Shala, do you have a comment on that or on anything mommy has said? <laughs> <laughs> no, she's absolutely right because you don't know what's coming next, isn't it? So, again, um, I just encourage people anytime you're going through a challenge, yes, talk to God, but look for other people that you can talk to um, that can be practical, that can be real, that can be honest. Because sometimes it's very difficult to, when people are telling you what is honest and you have a fixed mind on certain things, it's very difficult for you to shift. So speak with people who are honest, who actually help and support. Yeah, thank you very much for that. I think you cannot overemphasize the place of parents needing support. I think one of our topics down the line is supporting parents. Um, so parents need support to be intentional parents, all the help they can get. Even if all you can do is encourage a parent or pray with a parent if they are having a challenge, it's something, and it would go a long way. Um, Please fill the feedback form if you haven't, just to let us know about the sessions. Um, so thank you everyone for staying till this time. Thank you very much for um, listening. I don't know whether anyone has a question, but we might be dealing more with it on the group. Thank you all for um, saying we need to pray for wisdom. Yes, I think we all need wisdom to live in our day. Um, it's only God that can help us. Um, yes, uh, so the story. I have a question. You have a question, okay. Yes, ma'am. All right. Um, in the aspect of parenting, I think um, it has to do with both sides that the husband and the wife. Sorry, ma'am, who's speaking? To spend a child. Can you hear me, please? Yes, I can hear you. I'm not just sure who is speaking. This is Gladys. My name is Dolapo. Okay. Dr. Okay, all okay. right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, in a case whereby the parenting is one-sided, maybe grandma can help on this. Okay. As a mother, you're trying every possible means to make your children better. And you need the support of a husband. Fine, both man and wife are together. But you are not on the same, on the same page when it comes to parenting. You've tried several to like get through to the father to be like, let's be on the same page. And that way, the parenting is one-sided. And the children sees the mother as she's so mean, she's so harsh, like Dr. Shala said. What, what outside prayer, what else can you do so that both father and mother will be on the same page as regards parenting? Grandma, please help on this because I know we need elderly wisdom now, not, not the generation sorrows, okay? <laughs> Thank you, ma. Apart from prayer, yeah. You as a woman separate your husband. Ma, we didn't get that, Ma. Please, can you speak louder? I said, as a wife, make it a priority to be on this particular on your own. Number two. When we are not hearing you, ma'am. I'm not hearing so much background noise where you are. I don't know why. No, there is no background noise. We can noise. hear you again. It seems it's the positioning. Yes. Uh, okay. So I said the first thing, make it a point of duty to be praying for that for your husband separately on your own. That God should touch that area of his life. Secondly, when both to him, tell him, please, can you lean forward, ma? Yes, tell him when both of you are together alone, tell him how you feel, tell him what how you want him to be supporting you with it. Talk to him on one. Before you start doing that, you will have prayed very well for him.
that the Holy Spirit is in, that as you are, God will grant him a listening ear, a, not only a listening ear, a hearing ear, that, that we change him. And as you once in a week, once in a month, you will just see that the grace of God, you can ask other and uh, new people to join you in praying for him. Uh, I believe uh, for as uh, something that is worse than that. The wife is always and one day we decided to fast together with her and um, pray. Said the woman was fighting. She Sorry, ma. We didn't mm -hmm. hear you. Change your position, ma. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, and that's the story. Do you know the man changed? So, it's the wife that was telling me the testimony that ah, I've been looking for you. I've been looking for you. Said, maybe we told you to obey what God has said. God is not a man to will. He will do what he wants to do. He doesn't do, he do whatever he wants. To do. He always do what is for us. So I will like you to try that method for God helping us. And as you have said it, maybe this Ashola will be raising it up in our prayer meeting. <laughs> That's another example. I want to give another example. We are close to us. Teenagers grew up when they were having a problem with it. You will visit family, the father will be washing the car. Most of them will not even eat over or at least. So when they all sorts of issues like that, we call and concern their firstborn to let him know that he has to do the right things and be obedient to it. His father in particular. I want to pay your father's best when you are not obedient, you are not doing the right things. He paid your school fees. He brought you up those. Fees. The problem was, was with the mother. So when we talk to the mother and the father, God changing the situation and the children came close to their parents. Today, they are very happy because the children are and they are doing the right things. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sam. Uh, um, I'm hoping that the <laughs> our sister that asked the question has heard what she said. Um, I think mommy has mainly spoken about prayer. Um, although you said something other than prayer, but prayer still changes things. I think prayer has not stopped changing things. But I don't think it's just about prayer. It's about being obedient to the instruction that comes out of the prayer. So the example she has given is the example of an instruction to tell the mother in that you know, that she should stop fighting with the husband. And once that happened, it has, was as though everything just changed suddenly. I think getting on the same page is probably something that can be done for those that are not married yet to have important conversations before they get into it. But once they get into it and they start having children, if they are not yet in a place of unity or do not see eye to eye on things that are as important as bringing up children, I think it might be challenging, but there's no challenge that is too big for God. Um, and we need to understand that we cannot change people. Um, we can try for ourselves, but only God can really change. Keep seeking his help um, and wisdom. Thank you very much. I think Dr. Onawala wants to say something. Yeah, good evening to everyone. Can you hear me, please? Yes, we can hear you. 
Okay. My question, my consideration goes to both speakers. Okay. Mr. Shola and uh, Mommy just to talk for me. Uh, Supposing you have a scenario, how do you do intentional and effective child bringing training? If you have children or a child, you train, as Sister Shola has said, to maybe the age of six years in the godly way. Then you maybe put them in boarding house, boarding schools, for both their primary and secondary school. And if it's a good boarding school, maybe a secular boarding school, not a Christian boarding school. Now they will inculcate some other core values into them. And remember, they will be spending about nine months in the boarding house. And to come and spend only three months with you at home. So how do you deal with such situation? Because children, they will learn on learn, learn on learn. Or maybe you are not even, you may be in Nigeria, your children may be overseas in the UK. How do you inculcate that your personal effective training into them? You can unmute yourself, Mommy Aedro. And Shola. Yeah, let, um, I guess the, uh, mommy just answered the question, so allow her rest for a few minutes and then um, she can answer after I've done that. Is that okay with you, mommy? Yes. Okay. Um, um, thank you, Dr. Onawala, uh, for that question. Now, um, I tell people something that parenting itself, I will go back to my app and I will tell you the reason why I'm going back to this um, app that I usually talk about. Now, the first time, I learned about a child lying was from that um, parenting app that I usually discuss about. So this is a parenting app that um, I've known since I registered for, it's called Baby Center app, and I registered since I tested positive. So every week, they're going to be telling you what a child is capable of doing. And then there was a day I read, at this age, the child will start lying. What does that teach you? That no matter the training you give to that child, there is a fundamental growth as the child grows that the child is capable of doing some things without external factors. So the child can be in school. The child may not be in school under your care and will still carry out those behaviors because they are part of growing up. Now, with this child, like you rightly said, even adults, you learn and you will learn, you learn and you will learn. So you have your own basic core values that you want to imbibe in a child and then the child goes outside. One, communication. That's why it's very important that children are your friend. Two, when they start picking up, um, like, if, like you said, but in house, so you can't be talking to them every day. But how much of a relationship did you have when they went to that boarding house? And how much of a relationship did you have every visiting day? Are you always there? Are you always present? And when you're always present, what do you talk about? You have to start talking from the first day they arrived back at that school and tell you all the, the way I go about my questions is, what was your um, best event in school today? Your best moment in school today? Your worst moment in school today? So we talk about, we, we break it down that deep. Now, once you have a communication with the child, the child is happy to tell you what they are confused about because you are not the only one who is um, worried. The child will be confused. Oh, I was taught this at home but I'm being taught this now and then there's a bit of confusion and if you are a friend to that child the child will definitely come to you for clarification that okay which path do I follow or what do I do secondly when a child picks up a behavior whether the child is now moving um, to that value that is aside the family value the value that is being taught in school when he's more drawn to that value that is being taught in school why not talk about it why do you think that is better than the core value you have at home? What makes you think that is better? What can we do? What does the child want? And then from the answers you get, you work with that answer and you work backwards. So if the child tells you, I don't know if you have any practical example to give us and then we can talk about that. But again, even as adults, if you go somewhere, you learn some new habits, you leave some, you inculcate some, even as formed as we are, 
we still learn some bad habits. So not to talk of children, but again, if you have practical examples, maybe we can work with that. But again, it's the communication, it's the talking to the child and is wanting to hear the child's version of why they are drawn into another value that is, again, um, that is aside their value. But again, when they are in school or when they're in boarding house, there are rules there that needs to be followed. So do you think, if you think that this is not, this is anti the family values, is it a time to relocate this child? Because there are some core values that I wouldn't want to put my child into. I don't even want them to experience it at all. So that's why somebody like me would not want to take my child to a school that is not a faith school. I can't take my child to a school that is a Muslim school because I can't start reorientating what I've built already. Can you take so, her to a Catholic school? Yes, that's why I would take my child to a Catholic school. There are 10 Catholic schools at the moment. And it's just because we don't talk about things like- And if you are not a Catholic, if you are not a Catholic. Mm -hmm. I've been I've been a Catholic before, but okay. I have seen that I have seen that they have the core values that I want here in this country. They have the core values that I want here, and so they are ready. So it's like what we are teaching is a continuation of what we are teaching at home. So I'm happy with that. But if I go to a school that I feel okay, there are some things we can manage, and I feel again I prioritize. If I prioritize the academic more than the happiness and the confidence, that's fine. But if I feel that there are just some things that I know that when this child gets to a teenager or adult, I'm going to struggle to bring the child back home. I wouldn't. I wouldn't dare. So again, what is more important to you? Is it the academics? Is it the skills? Is it the values? Is it the religion? It, it depends on the parents. Thank and, uh, you very much. Just a last question, Sister Shola. Which has more influence on a child? The parents? influence or the friend peer pressure influence parents so parents I when did they parents. spend more time with their friends outside they may spend yeah, more time with their friends outside. before they get to that outside what have you done that's you know they know you first before they get to that teenage years what have, what relationship have you built i've got friends that their teenage daughters you come and tell them mom is bomb shot that is raining today and i want to wear bomb shot then it's now left to them oh mom my friend tell me we should smoke not all children will tell their parents that no but if you've built that relationship that you know your parents are not going to shout at you unnecessarily your parents will not overreact your parents will listen your parents will want to reason with you then by all means you will want to discuss anything with them because they will see you i mean you they've learned to see you as their first point of contact and they've learned to see you as their first friend before the peer pressure thank you very much for that question thank you very much dr fatala for your answer <laughs> i think my comment on that one is that what made the child end up in a boarding school at the age of six what were the events that culminated in that in the first place i think the bible is very clear about as in that's if i'm talking to christians about train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, it means that period of training is only when he's young. And so if we leave that responsibility of when he's young, other people, secular, housemates, schools, then we might not be getting the benefits we want by the time they are old. Because we cannot be training them when they are old. They are the ones that will now have the responsibility to train themselves when they are old. Our responsibility is to train them when they are young. I know different variations happen. Life happens to some people. They decide to send their children to boarding school at a young age. But for a lot of people, it's about convenience. It's about, I needed to be out of the country making money somewhere, or it was just not convenient. Children are not an inconvenience. They are an investment. And a lot of what we invest in them is what comes back to us in kind sometimes in cash <laughs> and it comes back to us it comes back to them and it comes back to their society so in that sense they cannot be responsible for themselves until that point when they are now responsible for them so that's why we are even having this discussion so we remember that there's a slide about children being impressionable if we've put the values in them and as children of God, we've also dedicated them to God because if we took the example of um, Samuel in the Bible, he was a child that was already sold out to God even before he was born. And his mother took him to the priest to be weaned. 
right after he was weaned and he started living in the priest house i can only say that the way he survived there and did not inculcate the rot in the house of the priest was because god was actually watching over him and guiding him and that is why we pray that our children will be taught of the lord that our children will be taught of the lord so we will do our past to teach them but we need to also be prayerful that they will also be taught of God, that their hearts will seek the things that matter to God, the things that, that God loves, so that they do not go off to the other side that we don't want them to go to. I don't know whether Mommy Aedo wants to contribute to that. I want to give a practical example. Well, we were in Turkey, and we went to Nigeria. We have very good friends that were like um, brothers and sisters. And they asked us to leave our ch children that they will look after them for us. We told them they don't know our values yet. We don't want to leave them. We are going with our children. If they now want to come abroad, do. To the extent that we didn't even get any uh, British passport or any Kenyan passport for them, that if they want to come to abroad, they will have to come on their own volition. By that time, they will have known our values and what to stand for. And that's what it is. That was another time when our children were going were in the boarding house. And we realized that they were not behaving the way we want them to behave. We expected of them. We removed them immediately from the body house. So it depends on you. As um, Mr. Timmy had said, I don't, that is one of the first things I wanted to say first that I don't know what a six-year-old is doing in the body house. That's one of it. And I have an example of somebody that was put in the body house from kindergarten until she was in the body house until she entered the university. Fortunately for her, we have to, we have to be a guardian, to be a parent. And my daughter is what about nine and nine year old. Some of the things that she can cook, this lady cannot cook it. I only realized that when we are in the kitchen, she will always be reading novels. Until one day when I travel and I came back, I, I told them to give me food and they give me okra soup. I said, I don't cook this okra. And so, so, and so. No, you don't know how to cook. I always sit down. I said, from today, as I enter kitchen, you must enter with me. And this is one major point that is always causing problem between her and her mother. And they were the cause of it. Because whenever she's on only day, she can't do anything at home. That's how I started teaching her to cook. University student, too. I started teaching her to cook until when she, when she now went to the, body, to the hostel, she will now tell me, mommy, I have cooked so, so, and so today. Can I bring some of it for you? I will say yes. And she will bring it. That's how she started cooking. Because when a child is not taught the right way or the right thing to do, there's no way she can know how to do it. And thank God she's happily married now. And I can, I can say she became a Christian, happily married with children now. And she's doing fine. Supposing she has not had that spiritual experience with us. And what I trust my husband with is whenever I have, we have to, we have another another child in, in, in with us. My husband will always give them assignments. It's now that she's is even very lenient now, he's getting older. Even if I'm saying, ah, 
Say me, they have just come. Let them relax a bit. You say, no, you have whatever you want to make a child to know, you must start immediately. So, my dear brother, what I will advise you those children are too small to be in the body now. They still need your attention. They still need your motherly and fatherly attention. So, and I want you to remove them from a school that you know that, that is not good for them. It's like hurting them. You are hurting their spirit when you put them in a place where you yourself are not happy about. I have, a, I have another children. The, the children are in body now, they are in secondary school. The mother was complaining to me all that the first two children are doing in their body now. Then I told her, I said, I talked to the, to the husband, I said, remove them from the body now, let them be going from home. If you know they are becoming wayward, at least if they are, they are, they are with you, you'll be able to see what they are doing and monitor them. So I think we should not leave our responsibility to other people to do for us because they won't do it the way we want to do it. They won't do it the way we want because we have our own core values that we expect from our own children. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. I remember my father, when my father has told me in the night to go and make food for him, and I frown my face sometimes. That's a long time ago. You now say we are, we have children so that we will not suffer. <laughs> yeah, be more kaba magia. <laughs> In short, train up your children so that they will give you peace. That's all I can say. <laughs> and in the world we live in today, we just have a small window of opportunity. God will help us to intentional parents. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ma. Thank you, everybody. Hey, Uncle Sam, where are they? Yeah, yeah. I can see your hand though. You are not raising it electronically. You are very lucky that I saw it. You can, you can unmute yourself and speak. <laughs> okay. Uncle Samuel is my uncle. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, can I speak now? Yes, you can speak now very briefly because uh, we need to be rounding up about now. Okay. Uh, uh, Sorry, I, I'm late. I'm just coming from an occasion. And I miss uh, mommy's uh, talk today. I've been one of the people he found me at. <laughs> because he, he brought me up. I learned from him too. While I was serving Bauchi, he showed me how to cook. He showed me how to wake up on time. And that was what it was I did. Even when I was single, I was making use of it. And up to today, my wife can even testify to it. And I want to thank mommy. I think I miss a lot. I will have to ask for this uh, video. Thank you very much. God bless you all. <laughs> thank you very thank you very much, Uncle Samuel. Thank you very much, Mommy. I do thank you very much, um, Dr. Fatsala Udwa Shola. God bless you. Thank you very much to all our contributors um, and listeners today. God bless you. Um, you can unmute your microphones as we just say our final words. Watch out. Next week is going to be awesome. Dealing with teenagers. We're going to have some great speakers here, about four of them, and they're going to give us their insights about it. Sorry for running late today. We usually finish before six, but we took a bit longer. I guess um, it was uh, an important topic that has been gone into quite in depth today. Thank you. Um, please unmute your microphones as we say our final words and say our goodbyes. Hi. Hi. And Hi. the children, and the children God, God has given me. Given me. We, we are, are for, for science for and science. wonders. God bless us all. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.